Very good. Very good. Ah, good morning. Good. Yeah. Now I'm at the activity center. Bob, can you hear us well? Very well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. members of the academe, our champions in government agencies, our partners in non-governmental organizations, and our friends in the private sector and in various foundations. Your presence here today marks your commitment to address the emerging concerns of 21st century governance and cybersecurity, which manifest at global, national, and local levels. I am Rika D. Abad, Assistant Vice President for Public Affairs and Director, Office of the Alumni Relations with the UP System, as well as a proud faculty member of the UP Diliman Extension Program in Pampanga and Olongapo. Welcome to the virtual launch of the professional course on digital governance and cybersecurity. We are glad that you could join us today via Zoom meeting. So please feel free to use the chat box to send messages to our panel or to use the reaction buttons to applaud or give a thumbs up. We would like to request everyone to keep your audio on mute so we can hear our speakers without interruption. Before we proceed, we would like to thank our partner institutions who have collaborated on this professional course to strengthen the capacity of key leaders and personnel. The University of the Philippines, University of the Philippines College of Law, UP Diliman Extension Program in Pampanga and Olongapo, UP Cifal, Philippines or International Training Center for Authorities and Leaders, United Nations Institute for Training and Research, or UNITAR, and the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, an attached agency of the Department of Information and Communications <clears throat> Technology. Just to let everyone know, we are also live streaming on the UPCFAL Philippines YouTube channel, as well as the DICT, CICC, 
and UP Clark Facebook page. To start our celebrations for this landmark event, please welcome a member of the Board of Regents of the University of the Philippines, who also serves as counsel of the Harumai Laurente and Associates Law Firm. He is a trustee of the UP Foundation, president of the Asia Pacific Basin for Energy Strategies, and also one of the program conveners. To give the welcome remarks, UP Regent Honorable Angelo A. Jimenez. Thank you very much, uh, Assistant Vice President uh, Abad, uh, Secretary Greg Hunasan, uh, my beloved former civil law professor, uh, and now UP President Danilo Cruz, Yusek Sermancao, SIFA Executive Director Dr. Ed Nako, Excellencies, Value Resource Persons, Participants, Guests, Friends, Magandang Umaga po sa ating lahat. This professional course, initiated by the CICC, UPCPAL, and the College of Law, is a response to the mandate of the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012. But it also opens the door to put all of us front and center of cybersecurity studies in the country today. We all know that the digital domain is in rapid flux. What may be true today may not be the next day. There are about 1.8 billion live websites in the world right now. A decade ago, it was only 255 million. This growth, while already mind-boggling, is not expected to plateau anytime soon. And while the six modules of the current course are already comprehensive in their scope, there is still much more that we can study together. As Yusek Mankao has already pointed out, the current pandemic accelerated the transition of the country from a traditional to a digital age. It has, in fact, highlighted not just the importance, but limitations as well of existing networks. The internet sustained our family, friends, and work engagement in the past year of severe restrictions on our physical mobility. But we Filipinos, may have been the most prepared. We had long practice in distance communications with our parents and siblings in faraway places with almost 50 years of experience in the great Filipino diaspora. Still, there are greater challenges to surmount. In UP, many of our students still need high-speed connectivity that is vital in remote learning. And we are investing heavily on our digital infrastructure. Today, nearly everyone is just a video call or a text away. Goods are being delivered direct to our doorsteps with a click or two on an app. We can book a ride or even a vacation in an instant. A good thing to have if only we can travel. People are also getting excited with larger and larger discounts on digital sales in online stores instead of malls. I imagine they would get even more excited if they have the money to buy. All of these are digital social mobility. Our now prevalent digital life rests on stable, secure networks. The more dependent we become on this hyper-connectivity, the more vulnerable we will be in the future. In the UP Diliman Colleges of Science and Engineering, and engineering, smart sensors and smart devices connected to the internet are being developed not just by our faculty, but by our students as well. And they are garnering global awards for their innovations. Every day, we encounter news of new devices sold in the market that tout connectivity and the ability to be controlled by an app. In 2018, the number of connected devices in the world was already around 22 billion. This is expected to rise to 33 billion in 2025 and 50 billion by mid-century. As our engineers and scientists develop these devices to talk to each other, we have to take into account these tiny computers at the edge of the network in preparing for cybersecurity. We have to be able to sustain all these active devices while ensuring the stability and robustness of our network infrastructure. The applications of artificial intelligence or AI in cybersecurity 
is expected to increase in the next few years. While AI, both machine learning and neural networks, can improve cybersecurity practices, it can also pose severe security threats. How do we prepare for some sort of quote unquote reliable AI for cybersecurity? Our university professors has been writing books for AI and is already using it from language translation to identifying fish. The university is also building a large data warehouse for its research and administrative data, and also to mirror government data. The UP Data Commons will be housed at the UP College of Science. The availability of large data, data sets and new tools from data analytics opens up new possibilities for industry techniques and processes to improve our daily lives. The predictive capacity and the new insights we can gain from it make big data analytics an exciting field. Aside from the predictive power, we can find correlations from events and find meaningful relations, meaningful relations that are not readily obvious when looked at one by one. This is in line also with the proposed PhD in data science program being prepared by the UP Colleges of Science, Engineering, and the School of Statistics. And they to be made available not in some distant future, but already next year. While digital networks have cybersecurity issues tied to hardware and software, we still must worry about one thing, however, and this is this little matter of the human side of things. The three horsemen of a, of a digital civilization is not just hardware and software, it is also peopleware. Our concern lies in the implications of cybersecurity to the ordinary person and the use of the internet to promote and protect the freedom of opinion and expression so important to humans rather than in limiting it. Today, we are excited to break new grounds in the cause of cybersecurity, but we are already looking ahead. Beyond our Hogwarts schools of digital wizardry, we see the collaboration between CIPAL, the UP College of Law, and the, IC, the CICC to expand, to involve psychologists, sociologists, and other social scientists because it is paramount to understand how people use the internet to make life better. We view cybersecurity as a tool in the advancement of our common humanity because at the end of the day, the heart of the internet of things is the internet of people. Super excited po ako sa ating sisimulan ngayong umaga. Magandang umaga mo rin sa ating lahat. Salamat po. Thank you very much uh, for your very inspiring words, UP Regent Angelo A. Jimenez. In keeping with the magnitude of this event, it is just fitting that we have several special messages in order to showcase the synergy brought about by cooperation, coordination, and collaboration. Our first speaker is a man of law who steers UP into embracing its role as the national university, serving its various constituencies and the Filipino people by producing world-class education, research, and public service, upholding honor and excellence with compassion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 21st president of the University of the Philippines, Professor Danilo L. Concepcion. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Malugod ko pong binabati ang UP CIFAL Philippines, ang mga kasamahang unit ng UP, at ang Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center ng Department of Information and Communications Technology sa kanilang paglulunsad ng professional course on digital governance and cybersecurity. Malaki po ang ating pasasalamat sa CICC at DICT 
sa kanilang pagkilala sa kakayahan ng UP Sifal. Dahilan ito upang maging katuwang natin ng isa't isa sa pagbalangkas ng kursong ito na ngayon ay ating inihahandog sa mga kasamahan natin sa paglilingkod sa bayan. Ang paglahok ng UP College of Law at ng UP Diliman Extension Program in Pampanga in Olonga po sa gawain ito ay pagpapatunay sa kusa at bukas na pakikipagtulungan ng UP sa mga ahensyang nagsusulong sa kapakana ng ating bansa at ng ating kapwa Pilipino. Ngunit ano nga ba ang kahalagahan ng digital governance at cybersecurity sa ating mga buhay? Sa mga nakalipas na dekada, nasaksihan natin ang napakabilis na pagbabago at pag-unlad ng mga digital technology. At ang paggamit sa mga ito ay hindi limitado sa mangilan-gilan lamang. Sakop nito ang malaking bahagi ng ating mundong ginagalawan. Hindi natin maikakaila na naging pangkaraniwan na ang paggamit natin ng digital technologies sa ating pamumuhay. Sa trabaho at kalakaran, sa pagtuklas at pagpapalawak ng kaalaman, maging sa ating pakikipag-ugnayan sa isa't isa. Ang mga pagbabagong dala ng teknolohiya sa halos lahat ng larangan ng pag-aaral, panggawa at pang-araw-araw na buhay ay nakapaloob sa tinatawag na Fourth Industrial Revolution. Unang binanggit ito noong 2015 ni Professor Klaus Schwab, ang nagtatag at kasalukuyang Executive Chairman ng World Economic Forum. Sa ngayon sa kanya, ang mga pagbabagong ito ay nagbibigay sa atin ng mga samot-saring paraan ng pagunlad. Ngunit may dala rin itong mga panganib, lalo na sa mga sektor na walang kakayahang sumabay. O sa mga institusyong hindi sapat ang kakayahan sa tamang paggamit at pangangasiwa ng mga makabagong teknolohiya o dili kaya ay kulang sa digital literacy. Noong 1987, sa kanilang teorya ng pamumuno, Sinabi ni na Prof. Warren Bennis at Prof. Burton Ninus na ang ating mundo ay nakakikitaan ng volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Puno ng pagbabago, walang katiyakan, masalimuot, at walang linaw. Subalit naaangkup pa rin sa kasalukuyang panahon ang paglalarawan nilang ito. Noong tayo ay mabulabog sa baksik ng pagkalat ng COVID-19 sa nakaraang taon, lalong napatunayan ang katotohanan ng mga sinabi ng mga thought leaders na aking binanggit. Isang napakalawak at napakatinding disruption sa kasangkatauhan ang dala ng pandemyang ito. Tinigil nito ang buhay na ating kinagawian, ang malayang pagkilos, paglalakbay, at pakikipaghalubilo ay naging limitado dahil sa panganib ng pagkalat ng sakit na ito. Kung noon, bago pa man nagkaroon ng COVID-19, ay laganap na ang paggamit ng digital technologies sa pagdating ng pandemya, ay lalo pang pinaigting ang pangangailangan sa paggamit ng mga ito. Tunay na napakalaking papel na ang ginagampanan ng teknolohiya sa buhay natin. Bunsod ng pandemya. Napilitan tayong gawing sandigan ang digital technologies. May pagpatuloy lamang ang ating mga gawain at pamumuhay sa paraang remote. Ang pinatinding pag-asa natin sa teknolohiya simula nitong 2020 ay isang dahilan kung bakit tunay na napapanahon ang mas malalim pang pagtutuon ng pansin sa digital governance at cybersecurity lalong-lalo na ang ating pamahalaan. Ang isa pang dahilan ay ang mabilis na pagdami ng cybercrimes. Sa ulat ng Interpol mula sa kanilang pagsubaybay sa cybercrime rate sa panahon ng COVID-19, nakita nila ang nakababahalang bilis ng pagtaas nito. Sa mga salita nga ni Interpol Secretary General Jurgen Stock, and I quote, 
Cyber criminals are developing and boosting their attacks at an alarming pace, exploiting the fear and uncertainty caused by the unstable social and economic situation created by COVID-19. Close quote. Kung naging mapag-angkop ang karamihan sa disruption ng COVID-19 para patuloy na makapaghanap buhay, makapag-aral at makapaglingkod, ay naging mapag-angkop din ang mga masasamang loob sa paggawa ng cybercrime. Ang mabilisang paglipat sa remote work, teaching, and learning ng maraming institusyon ay naglantad naman sa mga kahinaan ng kanilang mga sistema at sinamantala ito na mga cyber criminals. Sa ulat ding iyon ng Interpol, sinabi nilang nagkaroon ng significant target shift ang mga cyber criminals. Mula sa mga individual at malilit na negosyo, target na nila ngayon ang mas malalaking mga korporasyon, mga sangay ng pamahalaan at mga tinaguriang critical health infrastructure. Hindi lamang kalusugang pangangatawan ang pinagbabantaan ng COVID-19. Ang bunga ng panganib ng pagkakasakit ay nagdudulot din ng matinding dagok sa kalusugang pangkaisipan ng karamihan. At dumaragtag pa rito ang pag-atake sa seguridad ng digital systems at makakalagang datos na nakapaloob sa mga ito. Wika nga ni Stock, and I quote, COVID-19 also poses a threat to our cyber health. Ang pagsasanib puwersa ng kadalubhasaan at kaalaman ng UP at ng CICCDICT ay isang pagtugon sa mga hamong dala ng panahong ito. Mga hamon sa kaligtasan, seguridad at katataga ng mga sistemang tumutulong sa pag-iimbak at pangangasiwa sa ating impormasyong digital. Hangad ko lamang na bukod sa paunang pagbubukas nitong kurso sa mga opisyal ng ating pamakalaang pambansa at sa kalaunan ay sa mga local government units, sana ay magkaroon din ng ganitong klasing kurso para sa pribadong sektor. Lalo na sa mga maliliit na kumpanya o negosyong higit na nangangailangan ng digital literacy. Marami pa naman ang nahikayat sa online business dahil sa pandemya. At mahalaga ring maipaabot natin ang sapat na kaalaman tungkol sa digital governance at cybersecurity sa mga ordinaryong mamamayan na gumagamit ng teknolohiya upang mapalawak, mapalakas at mapatibay ang kanilang pag-aingat sa kanilang digital information. Inaasahan ko ang pagpapalawig at tagumpay ng programang ito. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay kayong lahat. Thank you very much, UP President Honorable Danilo L. Concepcion. Our next speaker is a dynamic and reliable professional with over 30 years of experience as a corporate executive. He has honed his superb organizational and interpersonal skills in the field of international and inter-island shipping operations. On his maiden appointment in government service, please welcome the Director of the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, an attached agency with the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Director Ping Nyore L. Salva, Jr. Assistant Vice President Maria Angelica Abad, UP President Danilo Lardizapal Concepcion, UP Regent Angelo Jimenez, DICT Secretary Gregorio B. Hunasan II, Chair Chairman Prospero de Vera III, UP Depot Director Dr. Ed Napo, Director Meros Magsaysay, and to our energetic CICC Executive Director, USEC Cesar Oman Cow II, good morning. And good morning to all our guests who could make up the who's any day. I will not want to name them, 
but I am certainly happy that they came to honor this virtual launching with their presence. I am Panfilo Niore Lardizabal Salvo Jr., Director for Administrative and Finance of the CICC. Republic Act 10175, known as the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012, mandates, among others, the CICC to institute a national cybersecurity plan. Having very recently organized the marching order given to us in the Secretariat was to institute a plan that was to fully facilitate members of the interagency group of CICC was to fully implement the law as one. There was a time when I would read the biography of famous men. I still do now when I get the inspiration. Among those I once read was the brief life of the youngest Nobel Peace Prize awardee, Martin Luther King Jr., whose famous address, I have a dream, reflects a need for humanity to continue to dream even under the most difficult situations. That was what came to my mind when instructed to set the motion of capacitating the men and the women of cybercrime investigation and coordinating center. Where would we start? I remember having read a quote of MLK Jr. who said, you don't need to see the whole staircase just to take the first step. With the rector Ben Maxaisai, we sat to brainstorm together with Amado Bautista. And that was the first. The next step, which brought us to this day, is that meeting we had with the University of the Philippines group of Dr. Ed Nako and UP Regent Angelo Jimenez. In the company of the committed experts from UP and other sectors of the government in cyber knowledge, law and governance, I am happy to be the co-convener of the first professional course in digital governance and cybersecurity, which we are launching today. It is therefore a great pleasure to introduce to you now the force behind the DICT CICC, whose influence and track record inspire others to dream and act to bring dreams to reality. I used to watch and observe Secretary. Gregorio Hunasan, only from afar, when I first entered the Philippine Military Academy as a young plebe, when he was Chief of Security of the Department of National Defense. His leadership records at the Academy was an open book to young cadets who ever dreamt of becoming a member of the armed forces of the Philippines. As we expected from all of his achievements during his years at the academy, he graduated with the highest leadership aggregate award given by the institution. As a young lieutenant, he, he was several times in combat by leading his men from the front, by example. To this day, Secretary Hunasan remained a leader who leads from the front 
with his medals and gallantry in action, well recognized, he is remembered for his role in as a leader of the RAM during the 1986 Edsa People Power Revolution that ended the rule of President Ferdinand Edwin Marcos. At age 35, he became the youngest officer in the history of the armed forces at that time to be promoted full colonel. He was also handpicked to serve as aide to the Secretary of National Defense and later as Chief of Security. In 1981, he earned his master's degree from the Asian Institute of Management, where he graduated with distinction for his thesis and management research report. His entry into the Philippine Senate marked his evolution from rebel soldier to statesman. Secretary Gregorio Ballesteros Sonasa II was first elected to the Senate in 1995, the first truly independent candidate in Philippine political history to win in national elections. He has been elected senator four times as an independent. In the Senate, he contributed landmark legislations, which up to this day is in place. In the Senate's centennial year, Secretary Honasan was elected Assistant Majority Leader of the Senate, member of the Commission on Appointments, and Assistant Majority Leader, and Chairman of two major Senate committees, National Defense and Security, and Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation and chairman of the Select Oversight Committee on Intelligence Funds, as well as the Ad Hoc Committee on the Marawi Reconstruction and Rehabilitation. Other chairmanships he held as a four-term senator for 20 years were the committees on energy, labor, environment, agrarian reform, sports, public information and mass media, public order in dangerous drugs. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to introduce an officer and a gentleman, a former senator, DICT secretary, and chairman of CICC, Chairman Gregorio Ballesteros Honasan II. Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, Executive Director Cesar Mangkao II, University of the Philippines President Danilo L. Concepcion, UP Assistant Vice President for Public Affairs Maria Angelica Abad, UP Regent Angelo A. Jimenez, Director of I think we're just having a little bit of uh, some technical. Okay, here we go. Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, Executive Director Cesar Mangkao II, University of the Philippines President Danilo L. Concepcion, UP Assistant Vice President for Public Affairs Maria Angelica Abad, UP Regent Angelo A. Jimenez, Director of UP Centre International de Formacion de Autorité at Leaders Philippines, UP CIFAL Philippines and UP Diliman Extension Program in Pampanga and Olongapo, Dr. Edna Estefania Eco, CICC Director Panfilo Neore El Salva Jr., DICT HTC CICC Lead 
of Cybercrime Policy Plans and International Coordination Director Mary Rose E. Magsaysay. Protecting our country's critical information infrastructures is a lot like protecting our families. In order to protect them, you put in effort to give them a safe shelter, a sturdy roof, strong walls, doors installed with secured locks, and all sorts of tools to keep away threats that lurk in the night. We would put up high walls and gates around our house that would deter even the most skilled intruders. If we could, we would even hire bodyguards for each family member, watching over them as they go through their day. And even with the presence of guards, we still make certain that they learn how to defend and keep themselves safe in any situation. That is the essence of modern cybersecurity, to employ layers upon layers of defenses, hardware, software, policies, and measures that would ensure security and balance function. As we transition to the new normal, our people, institutions, and our nation as a whole are most reliant on ICT. It is inevitable that we step up our cybersecurity practices and technologies to adapt to the ever-changing digital landscape that ensure that our nation is able to function securely in the digital world. Recognizing this, your Department of Information and Communications Technology, or DICT, has strengthened its cybersecurity efforts under our newly adopted CHIP, Conceptual Framework, where C is for Connect, H is for Harness, I is for Innovate, and P is for Protect. Under the PROTECT Trust, we shall ensure the protection and mitigation of possible risks that will be encountered as we transition to a digitally enabled economy. At present, we are employing various initiatives under the National Cybersecurity Plan 2022, including the Cybersecurity Management Program, or CSMP, and the Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure, or PNPKI. Likewise, the DICT has also ramped up the efforts of its National Computer Emergency Response Team, or NCERT, in monitoring, handling, and responding to cyber threats and risks, and in performing other frontline services. The launching of the professional course of digital governance and cybersecurity by the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center and the University of the Philippines is a welcome initiative that will surely further strengthen our efforts in improving and fortifying the country's cybersecurity as it arms learners with an appreciation and understanding of modern information and system technology, the complex domains of cybersecurity, and the methods and approaches of various sectors in addressing cyber risks and challenges in the national and global level. As such, we congratulate both CICC and UP for this partnership. We wish you success and we hope that we could all work together in the future. All our efforts are for the benefit of all Filipinos, especially our most precious, strategic, and renewable resource, our next generation of citizens and leaders, our children. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay. Thank you very much, Honorable Gregorio Onasan II, Secretary of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Our next speaker is a visionary for leadership, public management, and governance in the 21st century. She has been awarded for various publications on governance, democracy, electoral reforms, and citizenship. She is a full member of the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering, or PASE and the first awardee and recipient of the joint Metrobank Foundation Professorial Lectures and the Ateneo Professional Schools. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dean of the UP Diliman Extension Program in Pampanga in Olongapo and a program convener, Dr. Edna Estefania A. Ko. Thank you very much, uh, Rika, for that uh, very kind introduction. And uh, good morning or good afternoon to wherever you are. 
uh, in the world today. I would like, first of all, to trace the origin of this project, a very special one, and a dear one to uh, some of us. The idea of the project, meaning the creation of this course, started with a small group of friends and people who, we, who knew each other from way back. And I'm referring to the small meeting we had at a private place of uh, Director Mary Rose Magsaysay and uh, Regent Jijil Jimenez and myself. Lots of vision, lots of dreams for this country. And eventually we started to draw in and converse with officials of the CICC to bring to fruition what we have today and what we will offer uh, very soon. In no time at all, we were talking about dreaming for a better country, but also a better world because digital technology is not only national, it is not only local, it is also transnational. Having said this and having thought of it, we asked ourselves and said, why don't we begin with looking at digital technology, which is the trademark of 21st century governance. It is something that is even made faster and made a more challenging arena of work, especially in an era of COVID-19 pandemic. We have to continue to relate, to continue to connect, and to continue doing our work. So we thought we will begin with public service, government being the biggest service provider. And so we said digital technology, digital governance, and cybersecurity. But also we speak of governance in relation not only to government and people, in e-democracy, not only in sharing information, not only in sharing better services or providing better public services, but also in relating to the industry, the business sector, and quite importantly, the, the challenge of defending and protecting our institutions. And that is why it is quite important to bring in the e-regulation and our UP College of Law has been more than willing to support us in this undertaking. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not see any faster crafting and finalizing of a memorandum of agreement better, faster in the way I experienced, which led to this memorandum of agreement signing ceremony on October 13, 2020. I think the MOA was worked on, crafted in less than two weeks and in no time at all, we have two big institutions collaborating with each other through a MOA signing at the newly um, installed office of the CICC. Today, we are offering a course which is a groundbreaking one, but we hope that we will not stop here. I'd like to take pride in bringing in 25 experts into this certificate course. There are six international organizations led by the UNODC Regional Office for Southeast Asia and the Pacific, the Global Cyber Alliance, the Cyber 4 Dev, British Embassy Manila, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, and the Signet World. We have also experts coming from the private sector, and you see them on the screen. They come from a background of experience, of excellence, and of service at the same time. And of course, how can we miss 14 government and academic experts from the University of the Philippines, and I'm pleased and proud to have joined with us, JJ Decini, our colleague from the UP College of Law, 
the UPC FAL Philippines Affiliated Center of the UNITAR, the UP uh, Information Technology Development Center, and of course, my very own UP uh, Diliman Extension Program in Pampanga and Olongapo, the Cybercrime Investigation Coordinating Center, the DND, the DICT, and the Anti-Cybercrime Group of the Philippine National Police. Where do we find the most comprehensive course but this one? We also expect to treat the first course as a pilot run, bringing in 30 learners from different agencies of government. But eventually, we hope to share and to cascade this to other government agencies as well, to the local government, because cybersecurity is a task of every citizen, whether of this country and also of the world. And so we have a dream, a dream that we encapsulize in a, a course like this, which will run from March 10th, that's tomorrow, by the way, until June 7, with lessons or sessions for three days a week for two hours each session. And the professional course will have a total of 60 hours actually more than the length of time required for, by a decent certificate professional course. The learning approach under this particular time and condition is going to be via the remote learning approach. But we will combine a blended one. We will combine the synchronous and asynchronous mode of learning to make it fully engaging, to make it fully worthy of and to grant the takeaways that every learner should have. At the end of it, in module six, we will have a capstone project because the requirement of higher education is not only to take away theories, concepts, methodology, but also we want to see the application of this in the real world and how we could practice the concepts and the learnings that we take from the course. At the end, we will do an evaluation according to the standard of the UNITAR, the United Nations Institute for Training and Research and of the University of the Philippines. May I run you through the different learning modules? I will not read out what you see on screen, but there are six modules altogether. We have module one on the Philippine governance in the cyber age. Module two on digitization, digitalization and digital transformation, a whole of ecosystem approach. Module three on the key issues in cybersecurity in the Philippine context. We also have module four and as I mentioned, Cybersecurity is not only local and national, it is transnational as well. We have module five in e-regulation and to strengthen our peace, justice and strong institution. We have the very excellent qualified group of the College of Law handling the module five on promoting the rule of law justice and strong institutions. And finally, we will invite our learners to contribute to a cybersecurity program of this country connected to the world, being the capstone project. We will therefore show that this course does not offer only teaching, but it is also crafting and finding solution and seeking measures or policies that will ensure cybersecurity. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. And I am very proud to have this course offering start tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Edna Estefania A. Cole. Our next speaker is a former Undersecretary of the Department of Energy of the Philippines. Her specialization is in regulatory technology government technology and financial technology as a cross-pollinator and lead. 
She's involved in policy implementation and now focuses on COVID-related technology overlay on agencies, government-owned and controlled corporations, and local government units for the DICT. Ladies and gentlemen, a highly technical consultant to the Department of Information and Communications of the Philippines and detailed as the lead of Plans, Planning and Coordination Office of the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center. Please welcome Director Mary Rose E. Magsaysay. Good, good morning and good afternoon and probably good evening to everybody who is here this morning. And I'd like to thank you, Rika Abad, for the beautiful introduction. Before anything else, I would like to recognize that we will be having less than 30 cohort that will be joining us for this pilot, inaugural professional cybersecurity and digital governance course by the, no less than the best university in the Philippines, my alma mater, University of the Philippines, and in collaboration with the agency that I am now connected with, the Cybersecurity, uh, Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center. Uh, I have been detailed here and I'd like to thank you, the Secretary of the DICT for trusting me to be a part of this new attached agency of the DICT. And I also would like to thank you, our dear Executive Director, Under Secretary, Cesar O. Mancao, which he is my boss. And also I'd like to recognize um, Deputy Executive Director James Layug and my heart in our dear agency director for Ting Nyore Salva. And I'd like also to recognize the, the people behind this before I introduce that. Executive Director, um, Ria, thank you, Edna, Edna Ko, Gigil, Kat, um, Chris, and also, of course, Ariane, uh, Yusek De Castro of the DICT, Asik Alvin of uh, the ILCDB, uh, thank you, sir, uh, JM Marculim, uh, Kuya Toto, Edwin Paala, my only staff at the moment, Mr. Uh, Attorney J.J. Dicini, Marlo Bautista. Most of all, I'd like you to please uh, showcase a picture I'd like to show everybody to put some heart and uh, to humanize everything. Okay, this, this is my family. And they are the reason why I dedicate so much of my time in public service. Because I want this world to be a better world. And since we're all in a digital arena, I want the digital space to be safe for my closest um, people that I love, my family. Uh, and um, so thank you so much for showing uh, this one. And I, I'd like to also uh, mention their names, uh, Paolo, Bea, Jessica, and Maso. Uh, you are the heart and the reason why we will take one for the team this particular uh, group today because the future, you know, our children, they are our living trophies. For our future, for the Filipinos' future, we will make this a safe, a digital cyber world for all of you. And now I will read to you uh, a very short introduction of uh, our executive uh, director. May I have the privilege of introducing to you the first ever appointed executive director of the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, CICC. He is from Mindanao, where my mother was, the land of promise, born and raised in Davao del Norte. He graduated from the Philippine Military Academy, Sinagtala class of 1986. He later pursued master's degree in law studies and underwent local and foreign training to continuously enhance his professional knowledge and skills. He was a bemedaled police officer known for his heroic accomplishments for which he got promoted twice to the next higher rank far ahead of his peers. He received numerous awards and recommendations and commendations including 
the prestigious PMAAAI Cavalier Award for Police Operations in 1994, no less than a film biography entitled Mangkau, portrayed by famous actor Philip Salvador, was a, was a testament to his dedication to duty and country. He was the chief of the defunct Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Task Force, PAOT, for Luzon, and the rank of police colonel before leaving the government service. Part and parcel of his molding into a servant leader is going through the refiner's fire of life, most difficult trials. He became a victim of injustice and spent 17 years in miserable situation by being forced to leave the country with his family in 2000, 2001 and wrongfully accused and imprisoned for at least four times of crimes he did not commit. Both of his life's triumphs and humbling experiences kept him grounded, able to pick up the pieces and succeed in the private sector as a realtor and businessman. Now he is back in the government with a passion to serve. Let us welcome the newly appointed Executive Director of the CICC, Under Secretary Cesar O. Mancao II. Thank you, Ms. Lumad. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, and congratulate everyone present here today, uh, and uh, most especially to our dear City Secretary Gregory Honasan II, to uh, UP President Danilo Concepcion, to uh, Dr. Edna Po, UP, Regent Angelo Jimenez, also from UP. Uh, the Co UP College of Law, UP uh, Pampanga, and UP Olongapo, CIFAL, UNITAR, and my colleagues at the CICC, especially our very energetic director, uh, directors, uh, Mary Rose Mutsaisai. Thank you for that uh, introduction. And to Director Pankulo Salva Jr. Uh, let me just cap this virtual launch with a few words to uh, express my insight and appreciation for this successful collaboration, which was the result of the concerted effort uh, of everyone present here today. It is undeniably true that uh, cyberspace and ICT are the backbones of the digital evolution. Global connectivity has drastically improved and continues to provide new opportunities for governments, businesses, organizations, and individuals. The internet being considered as the most powerful tool of our age plays a vital role in everyone's life. It does not only provide access to useful information, but it also fuels innovation that has significantly improved modern information and system technology that are utilized in solving day-to-day -day problems, making life more convenient. On the other hand, the internet can be used as a means to take advantage of innocent or unsuspecting people, organizations, and institutions. It is an equally powerful instrument that can be used to do harm, if not appropriately managed. Due to the borderless nature of cyberspace, Anyone who is a potential target and victim of online criminal activities. It is said that future crimes are cyber crime. Most, if not all, crimes will be committed with the aid of cyberspace and digital technology. As the world makes its digital pivot under the new normal, a proportional increase in cyber crime incidents is also expected in our country. Thus, should step up the structural level of our cybersecurity and employ proactive policies and measures that would ensure security and balance function, incapacitating our layers of defense. The professional course on digital governance and cybersecurity maps out and offers a true north orientation, solving complex challenges in cyber governance. This pilot course which we successfully launched today, 
uh, this course was a result of all of us having a unified vision on how we can come up with the new methodolog methodologies, a new way of thinking and a new set of standards facing the growing cyber threat landscape in our country. I'm very proud that all those months of planning and sacrifices has culminated to the launching of this pioneering course. This course will shed light to the intricacies of leading a multi-agency unit of government, where collaboration calls for deeper understanding of all vectors of engagement and continuous efforts and learning to achieve momentous measurable results for a safer digital world. More importantly, we weave in as an approach all ecosystem convergence to enable a more effective implementation of the sustainable development goal, peace, justice, and strong institution. A great and many thanks to our partnership with the members of the academic community that for them, threading the breadth of learning required to pursue this program would have been impossible. We are honored and quite lucky to, have, to bring into the rest of the world the best mentors in cyber defense. Again, congratulations to all of us for making uh, this happen. I hope this program will set the tone for many other courses on the subject matter. And I hope that we will use what we will learn here to further the battle against cyber crimes for the realization of a cyber safe Philippines. Thank you and good day to all. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Thank you very much, Executive Director Cesar Bancal II of the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, an attached agency of the Department of Information and Technology Communications. Now this formally concludes our virtual launch of the professional course on digital governance and cybersecurity, a very timely and relevant course that is designed to engender capacity building amongst government agencies on the promotion of cybersecurity and prevention of cybercrime and the many facets of a networked governance. So thank you for celebrating this momentous occasion with us. We would like to request everyone who can to please switch on your video cameras so we may have a group photo. Okay, so we will be having several shots because um, there's a lot of us. <laughs> Thank you for, for being here today. We're so excited. Okay, so um, our IT people is asking me to count to three. So we count to three. One, two, three, smile. Okay, and they said uh, we'll do this three times. <laughs> One, two, three, smile. Okay, and one more. Are we ready? Okay, one, two, three, smile. All right, so thank you very much, everyone. And uh, on behalf of our partner institutions and organizers, thank you again, and please enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.